Welcome in everyone, I'm Kathy Mock and on behalf of the Board of Education and the Falcon Media team, we are so very happy to have with us today Jim Fisher, who's the instructor for our Skilled Trades program here at Fitch, which has been in place for how long, Jim? Three years. Three years, okay. And we also have some young men with us today, too, who are part of that program. And I always like to have our students introduce themselves. So we have first... My name is JJ Grise. I'm a senior class of 2024. I like it. And? Um, Joe Rogers. I'm a senior class of 2024. All right. So going to be going out into the real world here pretty soon. All right. So skill trades. I know it's really popular right now. Uh, popular option for young men and maybe even young women too. Yes, yes. So what is skilled trades exactly? It's just the carpentry, plumbing, electrical, sheet metal, HVAC. Uh, we work in partnership with the local unions in their apprenticeship schools and with the students going through our program, they get a heads up, they get first choice. Um, so if 20 people go in to apply for a job and our students go in, they get put in top of the list. Wow, that's great. So you rattled off a lot of options with skilled trades are. So what's the main focus here at Fitch for our skilled trades program? We teach it all. Teach all. So say them all again. <laughs> yes. Uh, we teach, you know, the basics of carpentry, framing, you know, drywall and all that, tile work. Um, we talk a little bit about concrete here in a couple of weeks before we get out of here. We'll be talking about concrete, uh, building stairs, hanging doors, hanging windows. Uh, they know how to run wiring, basic wiring through a house, and hook up light switches and outlets from the box and plumbing. We've gone over all the plumbing and drainage and everything like that. Okay, so you do do it all. Yes. All right, so what are some of the projects that you have worked on and what are you currently focused on? And I know you've done a lot of great things just here within the school and in the community. So, yes. Jim, well, what do we want to start with first? We talk about the arbors at the 9-11 Memorial. That was yeah. a big one for us our first year, uh, three years ago. Um, and it's nice you can go drive by. I, I once while I drive by just to look at them again because, yeah. you know, the students did a great job. There yeah. was a lot of positive publicity for that. Yes. Well, they, they, they earned it. They earned it. Yes. And, you know, now they're out in the world making their money. Or going to college so mm -hmm. they have something that when they drive through the community they can say I did that and there's even a plaque on there with their names on it so it's really big yes. um, we've gone through we've been remodeling kitchens here at the school for us to start our um, home ec or life yes. skills class yes. next year uh, so we've been really working hard and getting that done we've uh, tiled countertops backsplash redid all the cabinets made raised panel doors laying tile on the floor and grout and just uh, the full work over on the kitchen. We've done programs for the basketball coach's office, for storage wall lockers. Um, ROTC, we built a large portion of all their storage for in there for them to hang up all the uniforms and shoes and boots. So it's just been nonstop. Um, our last project right now is we're actually working on for our elementary school for their art fair. Okay. Uh, we're making stands that they can put pegboards in and that they can tear apart and store easily. So we will have that done by this Friday. <laughs> so you're not like sitting around at a desk or anything. It's like you are everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> everywhere. So JoJo. JJ. JJ. JJ, Joe. JJ, you yeah. first. All right. Do you have a favorite project that you've worked on that you'd like to talk about? Um, my favorite project is probably the kitchen because that's what I'm going to be doing when I'm older. I'm going to like re, like, I'm going to build houses and stuff. And carpentry is like a big thing of that. So that's my favorite. I like hanging up cabinets, laying, laying down the tile and all that. Okay, great. Joe, how about you? Do you have a favorite project that you worked on? Mm, it was probably the, the lockers for the uh, basketball team because it was the first one. And it, it made me like like the class and know what I want to do when I get older. And stuff. Okay. And then back to the kitchens. I know that's a big deal. That's part of uh, something big that we're going to talk about in just a minute. Yeah. Do we have an end date when that has to be all buttoned up and done and ready to go? <sighs> no pressure, right? Yeah, no pressure. <clears throat> it's uh, It should have been done. <laughs> but we will have our portion done by the end of the school year. Uh, a lot of the underclassmen, I have sophomores and juniors that are will be still in class when our uh, seniors walk out on us and leave us, go out to the big world. So my underclassmen are stepping up, and we're going to spend – a good portion of that last week when most classes are winding down. Um, I have a lot of volunteers and we've got permission from the administration or from the okay. teachers. Uh, we'll be working in there 
nonstop to get it done as much as we can so we can start class. So, Jim, how many students do you see on a daily basis? I have 175 total students. That's amazing. <laughs> That's between woods and skill trades. Yes, yeah, so you need all of that and then some, all that manpower yes. to do all the things you're doing. Well, I, only, I actually have uh, 42 that are in the skill trades that have been doing all this work. Um, you know, they're young men, they're teenagers, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're still trying to figure out things. Um, sometimes it's like herding cats. And other times they're locked in, dead focused, and they know when it's time to work and when it's time to, to right. back off a little bit. Right. And they do a great job as, as entirely the whole group. I can ask them to do something. Hey, I need this cut. We need to do this. And they know what saws to use. They know what, what we're looking for. They understand it. Mm. That's, that's amazing. I mean, you have to feel so proud with what you do in your class. There is something you can actually see, a visual that you've completed something and you can take pride in it. And uh, one other thing, too, before we talk about these young men here, too. Um, you've had probably a lot of successful young men. Is it mostly men? Or are there some girls, uh, too? We've got some young get... ladies in our, okay, that came out of our program. Yes. yes, yes. That have gone out and have jobs. Yes. They stay in touch with you. Yes, yes. Um, I ask them to, you know, just drop me a line here and there. Send me a text. Let me know how you're doing. If I don't hear from them every couple months, I might give them a little burst to see how they're doing. Um, Total out of the three years of the program, we probably have 56 to 57 that I know of that I helped get in. Um, I have heard there's been three or four more that have gone in after they figured college wasn't really their thing. Mm -hmm. So they took their certificate and they used it and got into the program. I found out through the program when people mm -hmm. were like, hey, I got so-and-so. And I'm like, okay, good. So, you know, we're almost 60 kids that we've affected over the last well, two years, and this year we have a total of 17 that are interested coming out of this graduating class. And I'm being approached by other seniors that didn't take my class, but they're wanting to go into trade, so we're getting them in contact with the, pro the appropriate uh, union rep for the trading program. That's great. All right, so we have these two young men here. Yes. And I know that something very special has happened to both of you. Can we talk about that? Who wants to go first? Joe. Uh. <laughs> um, we got a little, some, a little like a scholarship. We got a little money from um, the 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 trade school to get boots and, and supplies and things of that nature. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you said you have not spent that money yet. That and there's a reason why. What are you doing that uh, is um, most important? Contacting the um, the contractors and, and stuff like that, so I can get a hold of them. And why are you doing that? So I, can, so I can get a job as soon as I'm out of high school. Okay. And they're going to tell you what kind of things you need to buy with that scholarship money? Mm-hmm. Okay. You're up. The same thing. I got the same scholarship as him, but I have a, I've already had a lot of tools because my grandpa was in the trades, like I said, but um, I'm waiting to use those scholarship money to for my contractor, like he said, so I know like if there's any certain other tools I need or like newer tools I should buy instead of like the older ones I have. Yeah. Okay. I think that's really smart. It is very Somebody smart. Somebody gave him good advice. I actually, I think they picked that up on their own. We've talked we've talked about a lot of things about getting ready for life and focus and you know just yeah. being prepared and yeah. they, they get that speech every day. I tell them how many days they have left and then it's big boy and girl world. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But yeah, that's that's great. You didn't just go out and blow the money. You want to make it spent wisely for whatever it is you're going to be doing mm -hmm. in your real world job, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a really big deal. Uh, Austin Town Fitch received a million dollar grant through the Ohio Career Technical Education Equipment Grant, and there were four programs out of this million dollar grant and skilled trades was one of them. So yes. what are we doing with that money? Uh, we actually received almost 600000 for our program alone. Um, we're going to start a welding program next year. And with the desire to go back into and look what we've done with the carpentry and the other apprenticeship programs, we're also in cohort with the Millwright Union, and they are helping us, and they've given us the the paperwork we needed and signed an agreement with us that we can start a welding program here. So if students have a desire to go into mill writing, which okay. is you know, just taking raw steel and making bearings and races and machines run, 
uh, very lucrative job, and we'll be able to take them out of here just like to do with them. Uh, they can go right into the Millwright program and start their training the day after they graduate. It's amazing. And, and I always like to ask this of our students that we get an opportunity to interview. What advice would you give to a student here at Austin Town Fitch that's considering going into skilled trades and having Mr. Fisher teach? Who wants to go first? What do you want to say about this awesome program? What would you say, um, advice? The reason why I like this program a lot, at first, I wasn't planning on going to the trades. I was planning on going to college, but I took it to get experience so I know what to do like in the household. So I didn't, like, if I wanted to fix something. So my best thing about this class I liked is, even though at first I wasn't gonna go into trades, I was learning stuff I needed to learn, like, like fixing a, a a plug thing, I forget what it's called. Outlet. Outlet. Okay. I could have fixed the outlet, make money off that. Even if I'm not in the trades, I could do that for easy money on the side. Just because I took it in this class, I know how to fix it. Okay, Joe. Uh, kind of like what he said with the life experience and things like that. I just took the class this year, and uh, it's a good class because it gives you it gives you uh, more opportunities in life to to be good and, and stuff like that. So you would highly recommend taking this course. Yeah. Okay, and it sets you up for success. So it sounds like to me, as soon as you graduate, you have an opportunity to go out and get a job and earn a living. Yes. Did you want to give any thoughts, final thoughts on? It's just, you know, I, as an educator, you know, I used to teach government and economics here for a couple of years before they asked me to move down here. Um, our jobs give these young men and women tools to put in their tool chest for life. It's not about memorization, and right? it's not about regurgitating. It's about giving them real skills, giving them opportunities, and getting, letting them see there's more to life than one lane, that they have choices, and that they can take a choice and fall in love with something. And I always tell them, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I've been lucky between my career in the military and working here, I've never worked a day in my life. Because you love what you I do. I love what I do. And that was something I was going to say to you, too. I, I knew that you were part of the military. What's what Army. Army. Yeah, okay. 28 years. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for your oh, service. Thank you. Um, well, I just want to thank all of you for giving of your time today. And young men, I wish you the very best in your career ahead. I know you're going to be graduating soon. So with that being said, um, I'm going to wrap up our interview. And again, this is Kathy Mock. And on behalf of the Board of Education and the Falcon Media team, it's been my pleasure to interview Jim Fisher and these young men. And as we always say at the end, Go Falcons!